Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you some of the best college football news, predictions, and analysis. And today, bringing you our final coaching hire analysis of this 2020 offseason. And it's one of the better ones. Mississippi State, out of the SEC, who back on January 3rd fired Joe Moorhead after just two seasons in Starkville. But rightfully so. Moorhead never really seemed to fit down in the South. A Northerner, former offensive coordinator at Penn State, never really seemed to fit down in Starkville, compiling just a 14-12 record, 7-9 in the SEC, and 0-2 in bowl games. Earlier in the 2019 season, Moorhead was quoted saying, this is my team, and they're going to have to drag my Yankee ass out of here if they want someone else. And Mississippi State did just that. And when you look at it, you know, Moorhead really did come in and disappoint. You know, you look at his offenses at Penn State and how great they were, kind of bringing Penn State back to prominence in the Big Ten and on the national stage. Many thought he might be able to do that at Mississippi State. And in 2018, with a lot of talent, both on the offensive side of the ball and defensive side of the ball, he disappointed big time, going just 8-5 and five and losing their bowl game to Iowa. In 2019, it felt like it was a big year for the Bulldogs. Even though it had just been one year, it felt like, all right, Joe Moorhead needs to come in here and do something right. He needs to come in here and have a pretty big year, which is hard to do considering all the talent he lost from that 2018 team. Now, of course, he didn't have a big year. It was another letdown. The Bulldogs going 6-7 and seven, almost didn't make a bowl game. Had Ole Miss not decided to get a little, uh, you know, a little excited, we should say, at the end of the Egg Bowl. The Rebels win that game somehow, and the Bulldogs don't go bowling, but they do, and then they get blown out by Louisville. So, Moorhead not fitting down in Starkville. Now, offensive coordinator at Oregon, where he might be able to make the college football playoff, but another story for another time. So they fired Joe Moorhead late, January 3rd. Some of these other SEC teams had already gotten a new head coach in place by then. Ole Miss went after Lane Kiffin, uh, Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz, Arkansas went and got Sam Pittman. So who was Mississippi State going to get? Someone that was a big enough name or a good enough mind to come in and compete in the SEC West against those great coaches like Nick Saban, and Ed Ogeron, and Gus Malzahn, and Jimbo Fisher. That West, absolutely stacked. Mississippi State said, hold my beer, I'm going to go get Mike Leach. Mike Leach, who had been in the running for, for coaching hires uh, for years. I mean, every, every year, every offseason, it was, oh, Mike Leach might go to Arkansas. He might go to Ole Miss, Missouri, Tennessee, maybe another Big 12 team. He's leaving Washington State at some point. Never happened. At the end of the 2019 season, after a disappointing year, Leach signed an extension through 2024 to stay with the Cougars at Washington State. But Mike Leach, in only Mike Leach fashion, said, Nah, man, I'm bolting. I'm done. And came down to Starkville after a 55-47 and record during eight seasons at Washington State. And that, of course, included an 11-2 and record back in 2018. So one thing's for sure. Whether Mike Leach comes down to Starkville and competes in the West, whether he makes Mississippi State a power in the West or within the SEC, that remains to be seen. But the guarantee that we do have it's going to be so entertaining. So many great quotes, so many great moments, and I, like I've said before, cannot wait for SEC Media Days with Mike Leach. But you look at him as a head coach. Anybody can talk. Anybody can be fun. You're not out there hiring comedians. You're not out there hiring you know, nice guys. You're out there to hire a football coach who knows how to win. And Mike Leach certainly does know how to do that. He implements his air raid offense that thrived and worked at Texas Tech and did the exact same thing at Washington State. And his teams, in his 18 seasons as a head coach, his teams have led the nation in passing in 10 of his 18 seasons as a head coach. Running that air raid offense 10 years out of 18, he has led the entire nation in passing. And that's really, really scary to think about, that he might be able to do the same thing down at Mississippi State. Even more so scary, even scarier, is the fact that you look at Mike Leach at Washington State and how he did well was bringing in transfer quarterbacks, at least in previous years. Uh, he had Connor Holliday, who was great. He had Luke Falk, who was great. They weren't transfers. But Gardner Minshew 
was the guy that led Washington State to the 11-2 record. Anthony Gordon set Pac-12 and national records left and right despite a 6-7 and season from the Cougars. To run an air raid offense, you have to have a quarterback. And Mike Leach comes down to Starkville, and shortly after that, lands K.J. Costello from Stanford, a transfer quarterback from Stanford within the Pac-12, comes to play for Mike Leach. And immediately, immediately, Mike Leach has a quarterback, an experienced quarterback. He also was able to convince Kylan Hill, who was going to go to the NFL draft, Kylan Hill, the third leading rusher in the SEC last year with 1,350 yards, he got him to come back. So you've got an experienced quarterback. You've got one of the better running backs in the entire SEC. You return your leading tackler in Errol Thompson, a linebacker. Once again, Mike Leach's team is not known for defense, but he's going to have to have a defense if he wants to win the SEC. So right there. Mike Leach, in a very short amount of time, gets an experienced quarterback, an experienced running back, and an experienced leader defensively. The pieces all coming together so quickly for a brand new head coach at the Mississippi State program that, with the exception of a few years under Dan Mullen, has been relatively mediocre. This is scary. This is really, really scary, guys. This is scary. Mike Leach is a fun guy to watch, but with this air raid offense, with the SEC talent and speed that he's going to be able to recruit, whether it's legitimately recruit or through the transfer portal, Mississippi State could become a threat in the SEC West and could give teams like LSU and Alabama and Auburn a run for their money. And as we all know, Mississippi State has, in years past, been able to do that. Mississippi State has beaten LSU. Mississippi State has come close to beating Alabama. They've beaten Texas A&M. They've beaten Auburn. They've beaten Arkansas and Ole Miss. But those, of course, are towards the bottom of the cellar right now when it comes to SEC football, and that could change. But Mike Lee's doing a phenomenal job in a very short amount of time, and the pieces are all coming together for him to implement his system right off the bat. Changing a scheme like Joe Moorhead ran to an air raid offense is not that easy, but it might be when you've got experienced players uh, that have watched him and played against him for so long. When you look at the schedule for Mississippi State, you wonder, you know, what are the expectations for the Bulldogs this year? You know, you look and you say, what, what can they do? Can they get to a bowl game? Can they contend for a West crown? Probably not. But when you look at their schedule, they have a lot of very difficult road games. And unfortunately, they are not, uh, it's not favorable. It is not favorable in the slightest for, uh, for the Bulldogs. A road game at North Carolina State, and I like that. I like that the Bulldogs are playing a decent uh, Power 5 school, non-conference, playing the Wolf Pack a team that uh, struggled a little bit in 2019 but should take a step forward in 2020. And then, unfortunately, notable games, they have back-to-back road games, road games at Alabama and at LSU. They did not do Mississippi State any favors with this scheduling. NC State on the road, okay. Back-to-back games against Alabama and LSU, the two teams that are going to be fighting for the top spot in the SEC West. I'm not saying I'm marking those two down as a loss quite yet because I don't want to underestimate Mike Leach, but uh, it, it, I'm, I'm not banking on a win there. Mississippi State, really, when you look at their schedule, is not favorable. They only have four SEC home games. So we mentioned the back-to-back road games against Alabama and LSU. Four SEC home games. The biggest of those are Auburn and Texas A&M. Two teams that will improve. Two teams that will be tough in the West. And I do think Mississippi State can split those two games, if not win both of them. Starkville with those cowbells, I hate it. Been to many, many games down there. And it's so loud, so tough to play in, so hard to concentrate. So Auburn and A&M better be ready. They draw Missouri and Kentucky out of the East. Once again, could have been worse. Missouri, uh, Mississippi State could have landed Georgia, Florida, maybe even a Tennessee. So Missouri and Kentucky out of the East could have been a lot worse for Mike Leach and the Bulldogs. So what do we grade this hire? Our final hire, guys. Our final hire before we do a big coaching hire recap. And we'll go through 1 through 12 and kind of have him ranked uh, best to worst. But Mike Leach is our last one. And we saved him for last because he's one of the best. This, to me, we've only done one. It's an A-plus hire. The only guy that's gotten an A-plus in this coaching hire series was Greg Schiano at Rutgers. But Mississippi State, I'm giving him an A-plus for this hire because I don't know how the heck they landed Mike Leach. I don't know how they did it because 
like we said, Mike Leach, we knew eventually was going to leave Washington State and probably come to those greener pastures of the SEC, but many thought he might come to Arkansas, a, a school that he has really respected and talked very highly of and uh, has recruited in Arkansas during his time at Texas Tech. Many thought he might go to a, t a team like Tennessee when they were looking for a new coach a few years ago. Uh, you know, Missouri and Ole Miss were still having the openings. All of those places seemed like better situations, better cities uh, than Mississippi State. But somehow they landed Mike Leach, and that's exactly what they need to compete. That offense, that character in the SEC West just made that division light years tougher. Light years tougher. And while it might not all come together in year one, while Mississippi State might not compete and win eight or nine games in year one, they will soon under Mike Leach. And they can be really, really, really dangerous if he just figures out how to get a defense. You cannot win in the SEC without a defense. If you can run an air raid offense, that's great. If you can have a competent defense to go along with it, watch out. The Bulldogs might be capturing an SEC West title very, very soon. So entertaining Mike Leach, making his way down to the SEC. Can't wait to watch him at media days. Can't wait to watch him in year one with the Bulldogs, but an A-plus hire for Mississippi State with high expectations once again going in to 2020. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert. Make sure to like this video and check out everything we have for you down in the description below. We've got one more coaching hire video, a recap of all the videos we have done so far in the series, and then we're hitting the ground running with a brand new series coming up very, very soon. So do not miss out on that. And once again, as always, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.